medical device manufacturer Draeger, located in Lübeck, also Germany. The outline of my talk is as follows. At first, I want to uh, yeah, set the context of our work, presenting the application scenario and the project I'm currently working in. Then I will um, compare the previously used document-based development approach and the currently used wiki-based guideline development approach. Then I will give you a very short overview of the guideline we have been developing and describe the development process, and then I will conclude my talk. Our application scenario currently is mechanical ventilation, which is a life-saving therapy often applied in intensive care medicine. But mechanical ventilation can lead to lung injury, so the therapy goals are to reduce the time on mechanical ventilation and to find optimal ventilation settings to avoid lung injury. Paper-based clinical guidelines have shown to reduce the time on ventilate, ventilation and also uh, reduce, for example, um, human error and so on. But the transfer into daily clinical practice is, of course, difficult. You have to train the personnel, you have to systematically apply them. So um, it is advantageous to automate this guideline execution. And in our case, this guideline is supposed to be executed on a me uh, mechanical ventilator like the one you see in the picture. The project I'm currently working in is called WimVent, which is a German abbreviation for knowledge and model-based ventilator. It's a three-year project funded by the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. And the goal of the project is to create an automated mechanical ventilator that combines first evidence-based medical expertise about mechanical ventilation, the guideline I'm talking about, and physiological models that give you a more detailed picture about the patient. But I'm not talking about that part today, and this also involves two other partners that I've not mentioned so far. And our task uh, in this project is to create a development environment for domain experts, clinical staff, for the efficient authoring of guidelines in a distributed and collaborative manner. Um, the guideline development approach that was used earlier could be called document-based. They created documents they were called clinical workflow specification and clinical requirement specification, which were yeah, basically standard office software documents. Um, Visio charts containing the clinical process and describing it, um, and also a word file with some more information, documentation, intended use, and so on. And these documents were created by the clinical staff and the knowledge engineers. And this specification has then been taken by the knowledge engineers and been implemented, implemented in a rule-based system. But this approach had a few deficiencies. The most of them arose from the separate formalisms for the specification and the implementation. They ended up with really separate artifacts for the specification, those documents, and the implementation that was the rule base. And um, the rule base uh, really was hard to maintain. Because, of course, if you change one of those artifacts, you have to keep them in sync and make the changes to the other one. And it was also very hard to understand for the domain experts. And there also was no support for the distributed development, and by that we mean geographically distributed. You have your knowledge en engineers at the one city and the domain experts in the other city. So what they had basically to do was sending around um, emails with the doc those documents and they never were sure that they had the recent version and so on and so on. And the approach we are currently using um, introduced two big changes. The first came from the use of a graphical knowledge representation, a guideline language called Diaflux, which we created. It is based on flowcharts, so we basically have nodes that represent the steps of the guideline and edges, edges that connect those nodes to create possible sequences of actions. And the language was aimed at the understandability by domain experts and it also has recently shown it really enables those domain experts to model those guidelines by themselves without the need for knowledge engineers, so we like get rid of ourselves. And um, also these flowcharts, because they are strongly formalized, are directly executable and don't require any additional modeling. On the picture you can see one flowchart from um, 
the guideline, but this may, could give you a wrong impression. It's the smallest one. Um, the other ones are quite big. And you also see like the explanation component. Um, this is actual in wiki view because you can run test cases within the wiki. You see, I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, there's a path highlighted in green. That's the actual path. And you also get some um, derived values from the guideline that's shown in the tooltip. And the other big change came from the use of a semantic wiki as the development environment. It's a semantic wiki no we that has been used and developed in our department. And in quite a few projects, the wiki-based knowledge engineering approach um, proved to be quite useful. And one of the main reasons is that it is very easy to interweave formal knowledge, like rules and Dialflux models, and informal knowledge that documents those formal knowledge. This can be free text and images and so on. And um, for the formal knowledge, you just have to use some special markup. You will see a screen to tune soon. And what's also quite useful is that you can flexibly organize and distribute your, your knowledge among various weekly articles. So you're not constrained in any way where to put, put which knowledge. For um, developing those guidelines, we've integrated a visual editor. You will also see a screenshot soon. And the developed guideline can directly be executed within the wiki. So you, there's no need to um, export it as another tool and so on. And we also um, offer continuous integration of the guideline, so you can do certain tests after each edit of the guideline, so um, you can keep a certain quality standard of the guideline all the time. So the bird's eye view of the current development approach is more like this. We get a central wiki server, which is securely reachable through the internet. And it's running the wiki and contains um, the all the knowledge, the knowledge from those two documents I mentioned earlier, those requirement and workflow specification. You can see it in the left picture and the, the flow chart and the, um, and the picture on the right. And in the lower part, you see um, also the test cases of this. So we got one central repository that contains all the data describing the, the, the guideline and, and also the test cases. And this wiki is used by the domain experts and the knowledge engineers. And at any instance in time, everybody that has access to this wiki server can download the developed guideline. And if you've got the right hardware and know how to do it, you can, for example, put it on a ventilator. So um, here's an overview of the ventilation guideline. It's a guideline for one specific ventilation mode, which is called BiPAP which stands for biphasic positive airway pressure, no matter what this exactly means. But um, the guideline is able to control uh, all the six ventilatory settings that are available in that ventilation mode. There are three pressure settings, inspiration time, respiratory rate, and inspired fraction of oxygen. And uh, the picture in the upper half gives you a rough idea about the, the structure of the guideline. Um, the guideline gets certain inputs from the ventilator and also some data the user has to apply to the startup of the session. And first, there's an admission phase where we check if the guideline is able to ventilate this patient. It may not be possible if the patient is too sick. And then there's an adaptation phase in which the, um, the ventilation settings are constantly adapted. And there's also an observation phase where we um, observe the patient and if he's doing well. OK, the structure about of the guideline implementation is the inputs of the guideline are the current ventilation settings and also some data the user has to provide in the beginning. And also the measured patient response, for example, oxygen saturation, um, carbon dioxide concentration, and so on. Um, from those data, we derive some higher level abstractions that we later use in those Dioflux models that represent the clinical process. Um, you can see some statistics on the right. So you got about uh, 17 flowcharts that contain in total 300 nodes and 350 edges. And those models derive the outputs of the guideline. And those outputs are optimized ventilation settings according to the patient's needs and also some feedback to the clinical user. OK, um, now just to give you a short idea about the um, development process. At first, we created, uh, created the terminological concepts for the inputs, the abstractions, and the outputs. 
uh, on the screenshot you see a, the, the wiki in the standard edit mode where you can enter free text or the formal knowledge. There we can, in the upper part you see um, special marker for the formal knowledge. There, you create, there we create the, the concepts for the inputs users to provide, for example, uh, the gender and the body height of the patient. And in the lower part, part there, is, there is one set of abstraction rules to derive the concept oxygenation, depending on the oxygen saturation of the patient. But it, it's a more abstract view than this numerical value. Then we created these guidelines. Once the terminology has been created, you can see it on the left expanded. You can just um, drag and drop those concepts into the pane on the right, and then the coding node is created, and you can then um, connect those nodes with the edges. And um, what this part is basically doing is increasing or decreasing two pressure settings, the PS and the P insp, no matter what this is, by a two um, millibar. Okay, then we systematically created test cases, at first by manually entering data that was mainly done for uh, very short test cases because, because it was quite tedious. Um, or later we switched to using a simulation of a physiological lung model, um, which um, yeah, de delivered the data needed for the guideline execution automatically. This uh, resulted in an XML file per test case. This was then uploaded to the wiki and described and so on. It could then be replayed for introspection, debugging. Then we did a little, yeah, a little evaluation in a more uh, clinical environment. We used a human patient simulator. They, in the picture, you can just see its, he its head. Um, it's a quite sophisticated hardware simulator that contains uh, quite a few um, system, physiological systems like circulatory system, fluid management, circulatory system, and so on. Um, the laptop in the middle of the picture is, is used for um, controlling the hardware simulator. And on the right, you see the ventilator and also a laptop um, <coughs> executing the guideline. Because for the first steps, we don't always put the latest guideline on the ventilator. It's just easier to connect the laptop and execute the guideline on the laptop. Okay, to conclude in our current project, we use the graphical knowledge representation that we call Diaflux uh, as a simil single formalism for the specification and the implementation of clinical guidelines. And it really showed to be usable and understandable by the main experts. And it's also very easy to test and maintain. And for the development of these guidelines, we use the semantic wiki Noe, which in our case, greatly supported the collaborative distributed development of this guideline, and it now serves as a central repository for the guideline, for documentation, for test cases, and so on. And one of the advantages of the wiki is that we also keep the complete history of the guideline development uh, simply by the wiki, by using the wiki versioning mechanism. Thank you. we suggest this treatment, or for complications of this nature, we do this. Uh, so there's less of a flowchart nature than of a more association between situation and action. Yeah. Do you have experience also with modeling these evidence-based guidelines in your language? Would that still suit? I think that the evidence-basedness of a guideline and its nature um, where you meant like recipes for situations don't have necessarily much to do with each other. I mean, a guideline, as you said, should always be evidence-based. And we're just encoding knowledge that is evidence-based. Because of, I mean, in, in the end, the, the goal of this project is to create a product. 
that can really be sold. And therefore you have to, I mean, there are several ways to do this, to get this through these regulations. And one way is to just encode evidence-based knowledge. So, but I, I think that's not the, the answer you, you wanted to hear. You, you yes, okay, so you're saying, so I agree, of course, also flowchart-based protocols couldn't be evidence-based. Yep. Except they, they never were in the past. It was just a bunch of gray-haired guys in the room deciding what was right. Yep. Uh, but, so you're saying that, that uh, you're taking the current sets of protocols and, and, and coding them as these um, in this flowchart model? Yeah. But this is done by the experts alone. And, and another question I had was, uh, if I look at some of the other uh, guideline representation languages that are around, uh, so and you mentioned ASPRO earlier, they have quite sophisticated uh, control structures. So they have things like do these tasks in parallel and stop as soon as one finishes, or yeah. there are five options and choose any of them. Uh, <coughs> uh, or, and so, so fairly non-deterministic control structures. Can you express those in your uh, graphical format also? Or did you encounter the need for them even? No, not yet. And that's okay. one reason why we didn't uh, include it. Because we really want the domain experts use our tool directly to encode the knowledge. And one way was to offer them just a limited set of, okay. of elements okay. they could use. And so far, that really was all they needed. There was no situation where they needed hmm. some concept that wasn't expressible in our language. Did you do other examples uh, besides this one? You must have experience with other domains of medicine or...? Uh, with or a sepsis guideline okay. developed, it was one of um, the first examples, uh, but we have not yet uh, really used it. Okay, so the sepsis the and the ventilation models. Yeah. Okay. But we're, we're now developing uh, another ventilation guideline. But other people have been developing other guidelines. Yes, so it's not uh, only us using. Okay. So it would be easy to look at a domain like oncology, uh, so cancer treatments, where the guidelines have maybe a little bit different control structure and to see yeah. uh, what your experiences will be there. No, uh, so oh. far, no experiences okay. in okay. example, for example. In fact, I mean, I have a, a oh. question which is uh, slightly related in the that the language seems to get very simple. I mean, it just yeah. so box and arrows. So, for example, for conditions, how do you encode basically within the boxes or the like kind of activities, how they are treated? Um, conditions can be attached to, to the edges yes. to, to select the appropriate one. For example, here you can see this. No, you don't see the no, no, I see it. I see it. Okay, there's one box called target achievement, and we do, th this is one of the higher level assessments, so we derive them by rules outside of the guideline of the pr clinical process. And then when we reach that point in the guideline, we take a look how is the current um, value of that assessment, no matter what, what target achievement uh, in detail is. But uh, if it is miserable or below, then we increase those pressures in that case, or we go the, the left path. And if the target achievement is above, we take the right path, decreasing two pressures. And if it's OK nearby, then we just take the exit on the right. OK, so you kind of present state, this states basically with this, uh, this box somehow. Yeah, more or less. I mean, that state is derived earlier, and it is, it is present. And then based on the state, we yeah, decide what to do in the process. And then we have actions like increase a, a pressure or decrease it and 